Rochette. Hey! Hey, we got a present for you. Wow, that is so thoughtful of you guys. Thank you. Tell me more. So you know how the Earth is flat, right? Or how the government is run by subterranean lizard men. Have you been talking to Levi? Or how Apple started to phase out the headphone jack as soon as their competitor to Apple Play, Square, started making more money. Really? Well, we've got this piece of paper that we've heard is magical. Super magical. No, yeah, um, super thoughtful, thanks. But I'm just gonna go back to doing my real work. All right, well, peace out for shut. See ya. I don't get paid enough for this. Category 3 hurricane is heading towards Canada and is expected to hit on Saturday morning. If it does hit, it will be one of the biggest storms to ever hit the country. Nova Scotia is the area that will be hit first and they have already begun preparing for the storm. In other news, due to the recent amount of overdoses, schools in the Los Angeles School District will now carry naloxone, a drug to help reverse the effects of opioid overdoses. All workers who may need to administer the drug will be trained to do so. Within the following two weeks, doses will be supplied to the schools. On Thursday afternoon, it was announced that a $125 million building will be built on the UMass Amherst campus. The building will be centered around computer science and research to help combat climate change. It is expected to be finished in spring of 2025. I'm Gavin Knight Richard, and thanks for watching. I'm Noel Bizanski, and welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript looks at a new weed store proposal in Florence, Hamped Up checks out the cross-country team, Takeaway goes to Friendlies, and Cheap Throws looks at teen jobs in the area. Well, we're building up now to the final of the men's 100 meters. Usain Bolt will run in the seventh lane. He was the first Jamaican to win gold. Oh, they're away, and Gatlin got away brilliantly, and he's ahead of the field at the moment, and uh, Bolt going very near. Here comes Usain Bolt! Usain Bolt storming through! He takes it again. Blake gets the silver. 9.64! Oh, he's returned his prize for the most emphatic way! Welcome to Hamped Up. This week we dive into Cross Country's undefeated season and discuss their wins and roles of leadership on the team. This year, both boys and girls teams beat Ludlow, Westfield, and Minichog by at least 9 points and at most 35 points. We spoke to Cross Country runners to hear what they have to say about leadership and success on the team. 
Um, this year, I think that the whole team is just really a big, giant family. Um, so we really can support each other in that way. Um, we're all just super close, so that really helps us all be organized. Um, and I think that the captains can really, like they're really helping the team this year by getting everyone hype. The team works together to support each other in many ways. The first one, just give each other tips, tricks, you know, what you should be doing for stretching, what you should be doing after practice. But in addition to that, we're like one big community, we're like a family, and so we support each other in many other ways than just doing the sport and what you should be doing to be better. And my role for the team as a captain is to make sure everyone is doing what they're supposed to be doing, but also to be a role model and to make sure the team is cohesive and you know, make sure everyone has a fun time but can also compete well when we need to. I think this um, fact that we have such a big team um, kind of motivates people to really do their best. Like if you want to get that varsity spot, you really got to work hard. Um, and cross country is such an individual sport. Um, so like you're really just pushing yourself and trying to become better like for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> By wanting to become a varsity member, you kind of drive up everyone else. So even if you don't make varsity, you can still end up running a very fast time and doing very well. And in the end, varsity is a secondary goal in cross country. And your primary goal is just to become faster and just become a better runner in general. I think that we're trying to accomplish just keeping up the wins and keeping up the motivation. I think that we've had a really strong start to the season and keep practicing hard and staying close to each other and um, being really positive. I think that's helped a lot with the first few meets of the season. Thank you for tuning in to Hamped Up and we wish Cost Country the best of luck for their next race against Chickpea Comp on the 20th. Assassins. <laughs> Roughly 30% of high school age teens have a job. Now more than ever due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many local businesses are looking for staff and NHS students are finding part-time jobs. This week we interviewed working teens and their employers as well as NHS internship director Misha Begin to find out more about teen employment. It's a very fun environment for people to work and the manager is just super kind, super nice and she helps you You'll get trained by people and they're all very friendly. I made really close connections with people there even though they are much older than me. They're probably my closest friends, some of my closest friends. Also, it's just I like the environment a lot better. It's a smaller local shop so I'd go in there and I heard that they wanted someone to work on Sundays which is perfect for a student so I applied. The advice I have for students looking for work is it would really just be put yourself out there. Um, if you can, try to find something you're interested in doing or something that really appeals to you. But honestly, no matter what it is you're doing, I think that there's always going to be something you can take away from that job, no matter what it is. Looking into student employees requires the student to have to be driven and to be a quick learner. I like someone that has a little bit of experience, perhaps babysitting or you know, working in the community, perhaps they did some community service while at school, or they had done like some yard work for neighbors. It gives people a little bit more of a background in helping and being a team player. The advice that I would give to a first time student employee would be to dress appropriately to make sure that they are coming in on their own to either grab an application or drop off a resume. Mom and dad, aunts, uncles, or friends shouldn't be doing it. It's something that really shows initiative if you show up yourself. You should also have some history, be able to say you know, where you went to school and answer questions. You know, It's really important to be able to directly answer a question when a potential employer asks you. And I feel like once everyone's on the same team, that it really does create a more positive environment for everyone. So students should go to not only myself to look for help with applying for a job, but really any adult in the building, especially their counselors, adjustment counselors, teachers. They've all been through the workforce, right? They all understand how to apply to jobs. So you can get tips from everybody. 
and, and even your peers, people who have jobs already in the, in the local area. So I think just knowing that people around you are resources, not just the internet and Indeed or Craigslist isn't the only place to look for a job, it's actually looking around and talking to people. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about finding a job or acquiring a work permit, you can find Ms. Began in the guidance office. See you next time. After becoming the first state in the nation to criminalize cannabis in the 1910s, Massachusetts welcomed recreational and medical use for adults in 2016. The state opened the first two dispensaries in November of 2018, one here in Northampton and the other in Leicester. Since then, the number of operating dispensaries in Northampton has climbed to 12. Another proposed store that would replace the pizza factory in Florence, Euphorium, has caused backlash with local residents. At a meeting with city officials, community members expressed concerns over the proximity of the proposed store to JFK Middle School. We spoke to NHS teachers and Ezra Perzabach, an independent cannabis consultant currently working with Euphorium. I think I have no problem with the new, I mean, I know, I, did, I don't think you should, we should have a problem with the uh, a new dispenser in Florence. Kids can't go there. It's over a mile away from JFK. Um, if you really want to get into it, uh, there are two or three dispensaries closer to Bridge Street than there are to uh, what would be the one in Florence. And I, there isn't one in Florence. Uh, the, the surplus of dispensaries and the effect on Northampton is an interesting question. Uh, I think it has had a huge effect on uh, citizens' perception of the culture of Northampton, but I'm not sure that it would have a very noticeable effect if each store was not published in a newspaper. I don't know how many restaurants there are. I don't know how many uh, tattoo parlors there are or salons uh, or places that sell tobacco. but. Everybody hears the numbers of cannabis stores because we're in this awkward interval between prohibition and full legalization. Uh, the issue of uh, the proximity of the dispensary uh, that's being proposed in Florence and its proximity to JFK or the middle school uh, is also a, a, an interesting question, a flashpoint for many people. Uh, the first thing I point to is, again, the city council uh, voted in favor of allowing stores to be in locations where children will walk by. Uh, they decided years ago that that would be okay. And uh, the Cannabis Control Commission, which is the state regulatory body that decides where stores can be and facilities uh, in for cannabis, also has made the decision to allow and regulate these stores in such a way that kids will be walking by them. Um, part of their regulation is you cannot see any products uh, from a public space, uh, which is different than any other um, similar regulated product. I imagine the effect of 12 dispensaries, I believe there are 12 dispensaries, at some point is going to be cannibalistic with regards to um, the income they can generate. The proximity to JFK, I'm not really sure I understand it as an issue. I think that, again, local legislature has the ability to dictate location. And then on top of that, I think there's some nasty inherited assumptions about what cannabis does and is used for, and somehow it's predatory towards children or that they would be able to get access doesn't really seem to play out in my mind with regards to how they're regulated. As of now, it is still undecided as to whether or not the dispensary will be opened. Thanks for watching. Quick stretch break, tiny snack, and here we go. Mind if I drive? Ah! Ah! Don't worry, nobody's gonna get hurt. Pretend to be the Justice League. That's why I'm the hero of Gotham City. Mr. J's back! Since I've been gone, I've discovered something that you'll blow your mind off, Harley. Let me guess, my monster truck and your dodgem. Hope I'm not too late. I'm sorry, what's your name again? Name's Robin. Well, that wasn't too bad. Patty cake, patty cake. <laughs> no. Forget it, you'll never get my power. Do I look like I need your power, Senor Batman? 
Where are my manners? Batman meets Bane. Thanks so much for watching and make sure to tune in next week.